In my photography journey, I've learned a lot of things. Some of it was great, some of it wasn't. But in that process of cutting through the noise, the weeds, the fluff, I was able to understand what actually matters in photography and what I wanted to do with photography. Today, I'm gonna share that with you. Here are some harsh truths about photography every photographer should know. One, there's no camera gear that will make you a better photographer. There's no camera or lens that will make you a better photographer. Although this might sound a bit obvious, this was a hidden belief I used to have myself. When you're early in your photography journey, every camera looks awesome. There's the new Sony here, the new Fuji here. And subconsciously, deep down, I felt that if I had this certain camera or lens, I'd be able to do awesome things and take awesome photos. And you'll often hear many creators telling you the same story over and over again. It's not the camera, it's the photographer. To which you'll ignore and say, yeah, 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 now onto this new Fujifilm X106 or whatever. And this is a temptation I still have. Every now and then a new camera or lens pops up and my subconscious wants it even though I know I don't need it. This is the shiny object syndrome or gear acquisition syndrome of photography. And this is how it plays out. You start by watching some creator's gear review online. Then you look at the spec sheets and prices on eBay and weigh your options. You begin to fantasize about how awesome your life would be once you got that thing. And then eventually you press the order button. And when your new camera or lens finally arrives, it's awesome. You'll take some photos, use it for a few weeks, and then gradually get used to it. Then you'll fall back into old routines, stop going out and taking photos because it's not as exciting without a new camera, and then start looking for the next new thing. This new camera gear you got may still be awesome, but not nearly as awesome as your brain made it out to be. And eventually it becomes normal. This is just the camera you use. This is just the car you drive. This is just the house you live in. And then you'll look to that next new piece of gear that will hopefully give you that long-term lasting awesomeness that you so desire that doesn't exist. Now, if you're the type of person who lives and dies by getting new things, whatever, that's your thing. But if you're actually trying to be a better photographer, you'll soon realize that you can buy all the camera gear in the world and it won't make your photography better. After all, most cameras and lenses nowadays are pretty much the same. There's very little more I can do with the X106 than I could do with the V or other cameras I own. Because photography at the end of the day is see something, press the shutter, take the picture. That doesn't change, but the true limiter on your photography skill is you. And all that matters is the time you spend taking and editing photos, the time you dedicate to working on photography projects, and the hours you spend teaching and learning more about photography. All of those things are within your control, what actually improves your photography, and they don't cost a dime. So reminder, if you're thinking about buying a new camera body or lens, there's no camera gear out there that will make you a better photographer. Two. Your way of doing things isn't the best way, it's just your way. The next harsh truth I think many photographers could benefit from hearing is that your way of doing things isn't the best way, it's just your way. Many photographers, myself included, get wrapped up in our own creative processes and how we do things. We find a way that works, a style or look that looks good, and we find camera gear that we love. And then for some reason, there's this weird subconscious assumption that goes on within our brains that tells us, this is what really works for me, so in that case, it must work for everyone, even though logically that makes no sense because there is no one size fits all. But you'll still see this in forum sections and comment sections all the time. People trying to flaunt or share their recommendations as the way that everyone should do something. But it's not the best way, it's just your way. And that's the harsh truth. Now, obviously this doesn't apply to every comment out there. Some of them are actually really helpful, but for a lot of stuff, this does apply. So this is something I try to remind myself and include as often as possible when I make videos like this. When it comes to giving photography, philosophy, productivity tips, I have to be super conscious about what I'm saying. And I always try to remind myself and you guys that this is just what works for me. This may or may not help, so just take and apply what's useful to your life. But otherwise, there's no real way of me knowing what will actually help you in your life because I don't know you. And I can only relate and share what's worked for me. And some of it will help you, but not everything that works for me will work for you. Which means that everyone has to find their own unique way of doing things. And when you do, be cautious and careful and use that information as a soft recommendation for others. Because you also have to remind yourself that your way isn't the best way, it's just your way. Three, there's no preset that will make your photos amazing. 
Presets are an age-old thing for photography. I wouldn't necessarily call it a trap, but many people misunderstand what presets actually do. Presets are sold as a one-click way to make your photos look amazing. That's the value proposition. But if you've ever bought and used a preset pack before, you'll realize that there's more to it. It's not just a one-stop shop. You can't just buy a preset and voila, everything looks amazing. Because you still have to take well-exposed photos. And you'll still have to adjust exposure and colors every time you apply a preset. Meaning you'll still have to take a good photo for your photo to be good. So to be clear, I don't think there's anything wrong with photographers selling presets. I think you do what you gotta do and if someone wants to pay you money for your preset, then all the power to you. Another example of this is Fujifilm film simulations. Again, don't get me wrong. I shoot Fujifilm, the film simulations are great, but they're essentially glorified presets. And the dream they're selling is that they can make your photos look like film with a digital camera. And although I do love the look film simulations give my photos, I don't think they actually look like film. I mentioned this in a previous video when comparing film and Fujifilm images, and the difference to me is clear. Fujifilm images are like, digital film. They look great, but they do not look like film. The colors are different, the grain is different, and the sensor size and resolution affects the resulting images. Which isn't a bad thing, they're just different. And so Fujifilm film simulations are like presets. They are not a one-stop shop to good photography. You'll still have to learn photography and you'll still have to learn photo editing, and there's no way around that. Of course, if you shoot pure JPEG and that's your preference, then all the power to you. But if you truly want to develop your own look and understand exposure and color and all those things in that way, that's what it'll take. Because in my opinion, your style as a photographer is heavily dictated by how you edit your photos. Meaning that if you always use other people's presets, you'll never develop your own style or look. Now debatably, that could be your style, your style being that you only shoot JPEGs or you use presets, but I think you get what I mean. Point is, presets won't make you a good photographer, you'll still have to learn photography. Four, maybe you're not good enough and that's okay. This one applies to more serious creators and photographers. If you're someone who just takes photos for fun or as a hobby, you don't have to think too deeply about this one. But if you're someone who's serious about photography as a way of living, art form, or a way to make money, here's something you need to understand. Maybe you're not good enough, and that's okay. Let me explain. Say you want to be a working photographer, sell prints, get gigs, and make a career out of photography. But you feel like you're not getting the opportunities you deserve. And you might see other photographers out there who are getting those opportunities, getting those gigs, and they might not even be that much better than you. And in this comparison, you feel like life is unfair. But the harsh reality of it is that if you were good enough, you would be getting those opportunities and the world would have a difficult time ignoring you. So that's something you have to consider. Plus, whether or not someone wants to hire you or buy your print is something that's outside of your control. The only thing you actually control is what you do and how you react to what happens to you. Meaning, learn to focus on yourself and what you do instead of worrying about other people and what they're doing. Also, learn to convert missed opportunities into motivation for you to get better. This is challenging because I feel like a lot of photographers, creators, artists, and people in general are very bad at taking responsibility for their own successes. They work and work and work and look to the outside world to reward their efforts. But the world doesn't care about how hard you work. The world cares about what you do, what you make, and how you act. And technically, you could be the hardest working artist in the world, but if what you create is garbage, the world will not care. So how do we manage this? We manage this by focusing on what matters. Focusing on the craft itself, the work itself, what we do. Don't waste energy thinking about why hasn't it happened yet. Don't waste energy comparing yourself to others. Don't waste energy getting frustrated at things outside of your control. Focus on the only thing you can focus on, what you do. Maybe learn to ask others for advice on how to improve. Maybe read a few books, watch a few podcasts, learn from others, and spend more time actually taking and editing photos. Those are your options. It's either that or continue to wallow in your own self-misery and blaming the world and other people for not giving you what you feel like you deserve. Here's a hint. The second one doesn't work. Five, nothing you create will last. This is for the purists in the room. I don't think too many people struggle with this one, but some do. If you've got some sort of ambition or motivation to create something that will last, change the world, or leave an impact, 
Be careful. I think a lot of artists put too much weight on their art, meaning they ascribe a meaning to their art that is unfair to the art itself. They see art as their purpose or meaning in life and therefore become overly dependent on the outcome of their art. And they begin to judge themselves and have their self-worth be determined by what they create or what legacy or what impact they have. Again, not everyone, just a few. But this can be a trap that many photographers find themselves getting into as they get more and more serious about photography. You can easily look at the many photographers you admire, the Ansel Adams, the Dido Moriyamas, the Cartier Brissons, etc, 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 and start to think to yourself, I want to take photos like that. And before you know it, you're swept into a battle between art and your own self-worth. Because desiring something, even if it's just to get better at photography, creates a deficit between your current state and the state that you desire. And wanting these things outside of your control can be a sure path to misery. So what do I mean by that? I don't mean this as a bad thing. I just think that the earlier you can understand this in your photography journey, the better. Don't try to create something that will last. Don't try to leave an impact with your work. And don't try to do anything fancy like changing the world because it's not gonna happen. And if it does happen, it's not because you intended for it to happen or you wanted it to happen. Plus, if you give these things a long enough time period, eventually everyone will forget. Even the great artists like Picasso or Da Vinci, people will forget about in a few thousand years. So trying to leave some sort of lasting legacy in the first place with your art is futile in my opinion. Given enough time, all things crumble, even great civilizations. So you might be thinking, what's the problem with just dreaming, Andre? I don't think there's anything wrong with having big dreams, goals, or ambitions. I just think it comes at a cost and it's important to recognize that cost. That price being the thing we mentioned earlier, wanting something creates a deficit for our current state which causes unhappiness. A great quote that emphasizes this was said by Naval Ravikant. Desire is a contract you make with yourself to be unhappy until you get what you want. So here's the good news. When you understand this and accept this, it actually becomes liberating. If nothing I make today will last anyways, that means I could just create whatever I want. I don't have to waste time and energy creating something that other people will like or not like because who cares? I can simply pursue what I want to pursue creatively, make what I want to make, how I want to make it. And then I can be satisfied with the making of my own work itself. And that pumps me up and motivates me. So instead of trying to create or leave some sort of lasting impact, just focus on making what you want to make and enjoy it. Six, most photographers are not photographers, they're gear enthusiasts. This final harsh truth of the day is perhaps the most important one. Most photographers are not photographers, they're gear enthusiasts. Most photographers care more about camera gear than they do taking photos. And most photographers like to say they're about it rather than be about it. That's the sad but harsh reality. If you've spent any amount of time online, you know this to be true. Literally spend five seconds browsing the YouTube algorithm. Pay attention to what's popular, what gets views, what drives revenue, and what people are most interested in. 99% of it is about gear, maybe less than 1% of it is about photography. People love the new features, the new upgrades, the new tech. It's exciting and fun. And people like to fantasize about how this new equipment is going to make them better at photography and give them the photography experience they've always wanted. This new thing is going to change everything for my photography. And they love thinking about going out and taking pictures instead of actually going out and taking pictures. And I get it because reality is always a little less nice than you imagined it to be. And although going outside and taking photos might sound nice, it can actually be quite miserable. Some days it's cold, some days it's windy. Some days there's absolutely nothing interesting about the outside world and you're stuck there wondering why you're wandering around taking photos of random people on random streets when you could be inside, wrapped up in a blanket, drinking a nice cup of hot chocolate. And why the heck would you want to spend the next few hours uncomfortable walking around taking photos that no one cares about? You low-key don't. Because you'd rather watch that nice new cinematic video of your favorite creator taking pretty images. That's the harsh truth. And if you know this and are okay with that, that's perfectly fine. And I'm not judging you for it if you feel this way, because I get it. But if I struck some sort of chord here, I'd recommend to sit down and ask yourself a few questions. Am I a photographer or a gear enthusiast? Do I spend more time thinking about photography than I do taking photos? Am I more excited about this new piece of equipment than I am about what I'm gonna make with it? Again, whatever conclusion you come to, it's okay. Because whatever version of photography you enjoy is your version. And not everyone has to be super into photography if they don't want to be. So if you are just a gear enthusiast, that's cool too. But this is a video about harsh truths and that's the harsh truth. Most photographers aren't photographers, they're gear enthusiasts. So let's wrap this up real quick. Here are the six harsh truths every photographer should hear. One, 
There's no camera gear that will make you a better photographer. You gotta put in the work and effort if you wanna improve your photography. Two, your way of doing things isn't the best way, it's just your way. You've got a preference, great. That's just your way, not the way everyone else should learn to do it. Understand this and you can be more flexible in your process and also learn from other people's processes. Three, there's no preset that will make your photos look amazing. If you want to make your photos look great, learn to take better photos and learn to edit better. Presets can be helpful, they have their own uses, but they are not a one-stop shop to good photography. Four, maybe you're not good enough and that's okay. If you lack followers, subscribers, and sales, maybe you're just not good enough yet. So instead of blaming the external world for your lack of success, focus on what you do. Focus on the craft and good things will come. 5. Nothing you create will last. So don't worry about making something that will. Instead, create whatever you want, however you want, and embrace the freedom that comes with understanding this. 6. Most photographers are gear enthusiasts, not photographers. Most photographers would rather read and watch reviews than take photos. Many photographers would rather debate and argue in the comment section. Many photographers would rather watch photography content than do photography. Which one are you? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helped in some way. If it did, please share this with another photographer who might need to hear this. Also check out my new photography zine, The Sinking Sun. This is a project I spent a lot of time and effort on. And if you're interested, you can grab a free 4x6 print in the link down below if you haven't yet. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.